happens is you want to start now with a prayer tonight. Amen. Every head brown and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we give you the privilege and honor to be gathered here tonight, Lord Father, sons of God. And Lord, we come to gather around your word tonight, Lord Father. We look to you, Lord Father. Lord, we pray, dear God, tonight that you come on a special way, Father, and bless your Bible study, Lord, the time of, Lord Father, Lord, studying through your scriptures, Lord Father, and seeing yourself, Lord Father, unfolding, Lord Father. Lord, we open our hearts to receive you tonight. We pray you bless each one that will come, Lord, and to hear from you tonight. We pray you bless them as they come, Lord. Bless your speakers. You would use him, Father, Lord, to, uh, to show your scriptures, Father, in such a way, Lord, that, Lord, we could open our understanding, Lord. We could, Lord, that we could walk closer to you, Father. Grant it, Almighty God, uh, bless the people now one more time in this session this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Aren't you just giving some praise tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Amen. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Yeah. 
victory. Oh, sing it. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, sing it. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Oh, sing it. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Satan, get me behind me. Joy today is mine. Oh, sin and victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, sin and heart told Satan. How many have the victory tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. When the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. Oceans rise and thunders roll. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still and know you are God. Oh, when the oceans rise. So with you above the storm, Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still and know you are God. Oh, when the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will be. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still and know you are God. Oh, you are my king, you are the lamb, oh, the lion of Judah.
hallelujah. Oh, you're the line of Judah tonight. Oh, hallelujah. The seed of Abraham, the Holy One, oh, God's only Son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Anthony. Let's bow our heads with a prayer. And we want to continue to remember Brother Nicholas and Sister Naomi and the family in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this virtual room tonight and to be able to gather around your word. It's such a special something, Lord, that there are people that still have a hunger in their hearts for righteousness and for truth. And the only way we could know of you and about you and how you live and operate is by your word. And your word is true, Father. The Lord is a heaven that will pass away, but your word will never pass away. You exhort us not to add or take away from the word, but to stay with the word. And we love your word. We love your truth. And we know the word itself is God. Father, I pray come tonight and open the scriptures to us. Open up your word to us and that we will get to know you better, Father, and that we will know how to treat each other and to live in this present world. Grant, Lord, your blessing upon Brother Nicholas and his sister, Sister Naomi, Father, as we ask that your strength and comfort and presence be with them in a special way. In Jesus' name, I ask it. And any person sick here, Father, even while the word is being shared, may heal and virtue flow. May your spirit flow, Father, because this is your desire, that you're not just above or with, but you are in man. And Father, come and declare yourself and confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And at the end of it all, we will give you all honor and glory. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome tonight and uh, to our Bible study. We certainly appreciate you being here with us tonight to join us. And we want to appreciate it. We're not going to take that for granted. We want to thank you so much for being in this room with us. So tonight, I, I'll be taking a study tonight and I have something I'd like to share with you. Let's go. You cannot defeat a full-time devil being a part-time Christian. There are so many just want to do the minimum to get by. Eat at school, at home, in a marriage, or on the job. Taking enough of the word to make you feel comfortable, but not convicted. Not convicted of anything. The desire to be an excellent worker, excellent student excellent silver in order to uh, strive to the mark or move to a higher level it will take something and that is what i want to speak on tonight this has been the backbone of my life my ministry my marriage this part of my core is not something you're born with it is something that you can develop by the grace of god not your feelings, not your emotions, not your thoughts, but your commitment. And that is what I want to title this Bible study tonight. Just one small word, commitment. And if you have your Bible, I'd like to turn to Luke chapter 9. And we want to read from verse 56 to 62. It's a Bible study. You should have your Bible nearby. And try to follow with us with the scriptures because in it, as life. And this is Jesus, Luke 9, verse 56, Jesus speaking. He said, for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto them, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man had not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, follow me. This is Jesus said, follow me. He said, Lord, suffer me first to one bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury 
they're dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And listen, listen to Jesus' words here yeah, in verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You know, by this scripture here, you can see Jesus was practical. Jesus was real. He spoke truth. He didn't fool them or try to play a game word, word games to them. He said it plainly, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, if you see it, run with it. If you see it, hold to it. Being committed, meaning pledged or bound to a certain course or policy. Abraham was committed. Elijah was committed. Let's turn to the book of Ruth and look at chapter one. We wanna look at the book of Ruth. It's a beautiful book. I just sometime, um, you know, we could get down in that book, but Isaac, and I want to appreciate, but Isaac, uh, this time I want you to know sometimes he's weary and tired, but you want to appreciate him. And right where you are, I could give him a little applause. He can't hear you, but we certainly want to appreciate. And he has, is the one that had this burden for this Bible class a long time, not uh, uh, way before we had the pandemic, way before we had all this Zoom. He had that burden. And so then, like, if we could get something with the Bible, a Bible study, so we certainly appreciate that this has been his burden, and God has tremendously blessed it. Ruth chapter 1, we read, read verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, that there was a famine in the land. A certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. First thing, you're supposed to stay where God put you. But they leave the land and they... He went to Moab, and the name of the man was Emelech, the name of his wife, Naomi, the name of his two sons, Malon, Chilion, Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Emelech's Naomi husband died, and she was left and her two sons, and they took them wives of the woman of Moab. The name of the one was Ophir, the, the other name of the other was Ruth, and they dwelled there about 10 years. Malan and Chilean died, also both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughter-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard, here we go, in the country of Moab, how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Wherefore, she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord be kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them. They lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go away, for I'm too old to have a husband. And if I should have, I have hope. If I should have a husband also tonight, should also be a son. Would you tarry for them till they are grown? Would you stay for them having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieved me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law and Ruth clave unto her. She said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and my and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die? Where will I and dear will I be buried? The Lord do so to me, and more also, 
if aught but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking with her. Isn't that a beautiful scripture tonight? Two daughter-in-laws, one went back. And one stood there and says, your God will be my God. Where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I'll lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God shall be my God. She was steadfast. She, was, she made up her mind. She made a clear and clean decision and a commitment to go all the way to the point where she could see where thou diest will I die and where will I be, there will I be buried the Lord do so to me and more. This word commitment, and this is like a dictionary of meaning of it, the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause, activity. The synonym, synonym words for it is dedication, devotion, allegiance, loyalty, faithfulness, responsibility, obligation, duty, burden. An agreement to pledge to do something in the future, a commitment to improve. The definition of a commitment is a promise or agreement to do something. That is what a commitment is, not to talk, to do. An example of commitment is marriage or going into business with someone a state of being emotionally or intellectually devoted as to a belief, a cause, an action, or another person. We want to look at commitment to God. And I want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 27 of your Bibles. Verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 7. And this is being spoken to Israel. And thou shalt offer peace offerings and shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. This is verse 7 of Deuteronomy chapter 27. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Now, let me pause a minute. Hold the Bible right there. Now, remember, these people were 400 plus years in Egypt. They were familiar with Egyptian food, stars, gods, and everything else. God sent a prophet Moses to bring them out, to bring them to this mountain of God, to give them laws, to give them words, to give them truths, because they didn't know this God. That's why Moses asked God, who shall I say send me? Because this kind of people are not easy. You can't just say, God send me. They're not going to just take that. You have to have backup. You have to have vindication. So understand this, this word is not a game. This word is a revelation of God's nature, operation, desires, what he wants from us, what he desires of us, what he expects from us. And he himself has a commitment to his word. Actually, he and his word is the same. He has to keep his word in order to be God. Verse nine, and Moses and the priests, the Levites speak unto all Israel saying, take heed and hearken O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. So he's introducing them. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Amen. Let's look at Joshua chapter 24. And verse 14. And then we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Let's go to Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. And now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve you the Lord. And I want to pause here a minute. Some time ago, I was thinking, and I didn't, I haven't really worked on it, but it was coming to me about idolatry. 
about gods. And think about Isaac struck it on Sunday. You could make this your God, your car, your God, and whatnot. And if there was ever age of gods, is this age. Facebook is like a God. Social media is like a God. Don't talk about the phone. You know, I, it's almost like it's a worship with this thing called this cell phone, this, this phone. You know, long time it had no pictures, it had no screen. Long time you stand up, put a coin, that was the dial up, you had to wait in line to put your coin to make dial some, to talk to somebody. And then you had the phone where it had no pictures, you're pressing and you just put your ears and you talk. But now it's, it's like a TV in your hand. It's everything that is right there in the palm of your hand, like a God. People use it for everything. And it could become an idol. You have to glance at it. You have to look at it. You have to look at WhatsApp. Who sent you a message? You have to look at this and look at that. And it takes away, it takes time to do all of that. Deuteronomy chapter 10, we want to go into it. So sometime I'm going to go into it because it have gods. And um, gods, you have no other gods before me. So you can't put social media. You can't put cell phone, you can't put anything before God. It has to be stripped. And I trust them that this comes in a reality that this, these scriptures we are reading tonight is not like old time words or old time scripture. This is the God of the Bible. Joshua chapter 24, Dr. Chapter, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10 rather, Deuteronomy chapter 10, reading from verse 12. We will do 12 and 13. Not jumping, jumping here, but we will jump, jump with me. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good, for thy good. So that is all God requires of thee, to fear the Lord, walk in his ways, to love him, to serve him with all your heart, not some, all, with all thy soul, and to keep the command. Joshua 22.5 says, But take, take diligent heed to do the commandments of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to his, keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and soul. You don't have to find this one, but I'll just read it through from Judges chapter 6, 9 to 10. Judges chapter 6, 9 to 10. And this is God speaking. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians. And, you know, I think Brother Isaac was preaching some time, I don't know if it's a Bible study, and talking about people's attitude after God blessed them and so on, the attitude and how it troubles God. And when God starts to send manna and so on, they complain about the manna, they, they load this light bread and it tastes, tastes like whatever it is. And, you know, they, they have an attitude of things that they didn't create, of things that they didn't start it. And this is God saying here, and, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and give you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Now, God had to remind his people. One, he delivered them. He brought them out, out of oppression. And you see, when the attitude is, why, why are we here through this wilderness? Why are we going through what we are going through? We, as, we, are, we, are, we may as well have stayed in Egypt. That is enough to make God furious. Because God went through all these years waiting, tarrying to lose Moses, to get them out. And when they get them out, they get them come out, they have attitudes. You see? So he said, I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites. And I could say this, fear not the gods of anything out there if you are want to serve the Lord because he's going to protect you. Think about it, saints. 
Think about how much things you have been through and you're still alive. You're still alive and kicking. You're still, you know, have a roof over your head. You have some place to sleep. You still have a meal on your table. We have a lot to praise God about. Amen. Uh, let's look to 1 Samuel chapter 7, 1 verse there, verse 3. And after 1 Samuel, we want to hit 1 Chronicles chapter 28. So we just run through some scriptures tonight. I'm exhorting you, 1 Samuel 7, 3. And Samuel speak unto all the hosts of Israel, saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts. Now, you notice that they're talking about all your heart, all your soul. In other words, I don't think God is of part. I don't think God is of shallow. I don't think God is of this halfway attitude in Christianity. I think it has to come to, uh, like Elijah said, if God be God, serve him. If Baal is God, serve Baal. But let the God answer by fire, let him be God. Notice, so far, in all what we're talking about thus far, in commitment, we're not talking about church. We're talking about the Lord. We're not talking about your boss. We're not talking about your neighbor, your husband, your wife. We're talking about the Lord. What if every husband served the Lord with all their heart? Do as for the kingdom of God in their home and house. What if every wife is concerned about how God sees her attitude and her behavior and her words? What if the children want to please the Lord? You see how different the home is going to be? But it starts with this commitment. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to walk in his word. I'm going to keep his word. I'm going to walk in the light of his righteousness. I'm going to get on of that commitment to the word. Right now, we're just going through to God. And Samuel speak, this is verse 3, 1 Samuel 7, 3. Samuel speak unto all the house of Israel, saying, if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then, then, then put away the strange gods and Astaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And here we go. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Now we know the story when Israel backslide, there's some Philistine, there's some king of Babylon, somebody taking them in captivity until they turn to the Lord. Notice the process here. If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then you have something to do. Put away the strange gods. And that's why I'm saying people want to be comfortable enough to hear the word, go to church, hear singing and specials and so on like that but they don't want to hear enough that would convict them to change. And sometimes people stuck in the pain of their lives, in the pain of what has happened to them or what they have done, and it's not painful enough as to effect change. Because that is what God released all these trials and pressures to do. Not for you to be under pressure and under pain, no, for it to effect change. I want you to think about that tonight. It's not God want to punish you. God wanted to adjust your behavior. First Chronicles chapter 28. We want to read from 8 and 9. This is David speaking to his son. Just before that he says, verse 8, now therefore in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek. This is uh, First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse eight to nine. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land, and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, my son. Whew. Now this is David. He's about to leave. He's talking to his son. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. No, no, these words are, and as but Isaac will say, it, it, when you're driving slow, when you slow down, you see more things. 
serve him with a perfect heart and a what? A willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts. You could fool me, but you can't fool him. Why? For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all imaginations of the thoughts. If you seek him, so he wasn't telling Solomon, you are entitled to be blessed the way I was blessed. You are entitled to the throne. You are my son and God, you're highly favored. And, and, and I always say, look, you're too blessed to be stressed. He not telling David that, he not telling Solomon that. He say, if thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Now, this is real. This is the God of the Bible. This is not playing games. This is David talking to Solomon, his son. David is anointed. David is called. David was king. This is his son. His son of a commission to build the temple. David leave the drawings. Everything is dear. Everything is set. But yet, this would have portioned. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Jump into the New Testament, Romans 6, 17. I'll say it quickly. But God be thanked, Paul, that ye were servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Let me read it again. But God be thanked that you were servants of sin, but you have what? Obeyed from that. That means you could hear but you don't have to obey. You could be instructed, but you do have to follow instructions. And that's why Proverbs, Book of Solomon, we talk about hear my instructions, O son, listen to my instructions, hard, seek after wisdom, get knowledge, get understanding. Why? That you may know how to do, how to act, right? So that is why the words are so perfect. The Bible is a perfect book. Thank God be thanked that he was servants of sin, but he have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Oh my. And we want to look at Jeremiah chapter 42. Say, wait, this is scriptures tonight. Yeah, it's a Bible, a Bible study. Jeremiah chapter 42, we want to read verse 4 to 6. Mm. Hallelujah. 11 tonight, give God some praises. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you all for your word. Jeremiah 42, verse 4. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you, I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, the Lord be true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all things for which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good, whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee. And it will be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord of our God. Give the Lord a hand of praise for this scripture. Give the Lord a hand of praise wherever you are. This is the people saying, Jeremiah, Jeremiah say, I'll hold nothing back from you. Okay? Whatever God say, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to let you know what God say. And they say, whether it be good, people, whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee, that it will be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord your God. Saints, isn't it a beautiful thing? Isn't it an assuring thing to know in obeying God's voice, the blessings is guaranteed? Isn't that a tremendous thing? Note, we are not talking about church. We are not talking about church. We're talking about the Lord thy God. Now, remember, Barabam says, they were the people of God. And when they got called out, 
they became the church of God. And they were figurative and type of us coming out, you see, to become God's church. And remember how this church was built. Jesus said, how it was built. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. So it's a church that Jesus built. And this church is built, of course, by revelation. And revelations come by the word being revealed to you. Revelation come by the spirit uh, bringing the word down to your heart. So therefore, God had to send preachers, ministers, pastors, prophets, whatever, to deliver the word to you. And by the medium of the word, the spirit could pick it up and reveal to you his thoughts. Not Time Magazine, not the Trinidad Guardian, not some American or European magazine, not thoughts from that. You, you catch what I'm saying? So, so, so this revelation is not knowledge and information of humans. Oh, give the Lord some praise. This revelation is the mind of God. I see people believing things on the internet as if it's thus said the Lord. All kind of liars, crooks, all kind of evil spirits. They don't know what behind them people, but they're sharing videos, they're sharing clips, they're sharing what is in their heart. If it's negative, they're running it. They say, Look at this. They want the confusion. They, they want things to fall apart. They, they, like, like people looking for the press to come down. They, they want the press to come down with no power. All kind of crazy crankpot crackpots. It doesn't even make sense. The Bible said, as much as is possible, live peaceably with all men. You are looking for fight. You are looking to cause no confusion and ruction and the government come down and they tend to fight us and close us down. We have to fight back. And, 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 and quoting Daniel's scripture, we shall not bow down and Lord and it's not fiery furnace. These are fiery furnace. They not even go lie. This is no fiery furnace. They're no fiery furnace. We go <laughs> People are trying to make their own fire, yes. They're trying to make their own furnace. But I am saying to you, if we as a people here tonight would appreciate and value the word of God, the voice of God, then we could cherish it. We could say, I am resting on it. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is why you hear me emphasize the spirit, the prophet, and the bride will say the same thing. I ain't know about Facebook. I ain't know about social media. I ain't know about that. And what they say will already be said in the word. So my strength is not for information on Facebook or social media or what the government doing in America or Europe or wherever else. My strength and confidence is in thus say the Lord, is in what come out the mouth of God's prophet. So don't lust for knowledge. Don't lust for information. Desire, revelation is not the same. Don't, it's too much of knowledge out there. And sometimes it's, it, could, it could cook your mind. That's why people go on cuckoo, you know. It's a lot of knowledge just hitting people back and forth. A lot of knowledge. And, and because of social media and WhatsApp and the sharing and the passing and what something like that, information just flies overnight. So people like to know uh, the, the, the things are viewed a million times, two million times, 10 million times, and they're going viral. They're going viral. What going viral? A lie going viral. Something negative going viral. It's not God would go viral. Why God would go viral? Think about it now. How come we're not hearing dust the Lord going viral all over the world? People speaking dust the Lord. Look, a prophet said this. The word said this. The Bible said that. No. But all the things out there going viral. Friends, forget viral. Study what God has said. Study that we are dealing with the God of this evil age. It's a God of destruction. And commitment brings focus. Let me say it again. Commitment brings focus. I believe in being committed. Committed in marriage, committed to the family, committed to the Lord committed to God's people. All this is part of commitment now. Because you can't commit it and you're mounted by yourself. Commit to what? By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. You see, that's the word now. Uh, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and anyone who loves is born of God and with God. Okay? This is a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. So that's the word, right? Now, when you're by yourself, you soul win. And you were body with nobody, and you're taking no body and whatnot. That's not what the Bible is saying. This love carry loving yourself. You're not self-love. 
This is love that has to go out to the brethren. So this is a commitment of the word to go to the brethren to love and to care and to be concerned and to be burdened and to treat them right. Because if you cannot treat your own brothers and sisters right, how could you treat God right? When the brothers and sisters who you see him. Amen. So I trust that this will help somebody tonight. I, I trust it will help you tonight. Jeremiah 42 verse 4. Okay, no, sorry. You want to look at Chronicles, uh, 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. 2 Chronicles 16. Verse nine, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shall have war. So God does look over his people. God does look in the heart of his people that have a heart towards him, perfect heart towards him, protect them, covering them. All right. And let us look at 1 Kings chapter 2. I want to read verse 1 to 4. 1 Kings chapter 2. Verse 1 to 4. 1 Kings chapter 2. Verse 1 to 4. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways. Now, you see how I'm reading this here? You have to take this as if God telling you this, like you are Solomon. And to keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments, and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. What for? What for? That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. That the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children, not a guarantee, it's not like it's automatic. If thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. Oh, give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is your commitment to God. So let's kind of dig a bit uh, about commitment to God's people. And we want to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, familiar scripture. Then we go to Romans 12. So Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And look what God requires of us and what has happened in the Old Testament in the Alpha Church and see how we compare with it. Now, Acts chapter 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, one, and fellowship, two, and in breaking of bread, three, and prayer. It is, it is defined in the scripture. It continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They had doctrine, one. They had fellowship, two. They had breaking of bread, and they had praying. This is what we have to see. Not people, doctrine alone, no fellowship. You see, they had doctrine, they had fellowship, they had breaking bread, they had prayer. Romans 12, we're only verse 4. And this is coming into the church now. For as we have many members in one body, talking about our physical body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ. So no, this scripture take you away from seeing just individuals and I, she, and he, and no, no, no. 
He's talking about the body of Christ now. Four, verse five. So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teach it on teaching, he that exhort it on exhortation, he that give it, let him do it with simplicity, he that rule it with diligence, he that show it mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. You know, some people, they, they like to be complimented, but they don't get compliments to others. They like to be appreciated, but they don't show appreciation to others. They are all about themselves, what comes to them, what they want, what they want to have, what they want to get, but not what they want to give. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. This is New Testament now, verse 12. Exciting about this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I trust them that uh, you're excited tonight about this word, about being committed to God's people. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. For as the body is one, and had many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made a drink of that one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. And if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were, were hearing, where were the smelling? Now God had, but God had set the members, every one of them in the body as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot see unto the hand, I have no need of thee. No, again, the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. That's a big one. Those members of the body which seem, seem is the word here, to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God had tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care. Glory, hallelujah. One for another. Could we give the Lord a hand of praise for this scripture here that the members will have the same care? It's not you caring for your family and that church down there and baby down there. No, 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 no. You not even in Christianity. That is not Christianity because anybody could care for the family. Anybody could see about their own house and their own world and their own life and their own family and what anybody could do that. Why is anybody doing it? But this is the word here now that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have same care. Right where you are, say same care. Same care, one for another. And here we go. And when one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. When one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. And if you can't rejoice with a member being honored, you have problems. Whether jealousy problems, envy problems, hard problems, you have problems. Because this, what I shared here, is the word. So, see, you have to know when you see somebody blessed, ah, glory, hallelujah, so thank God for my brother, thank God for my sister. Not, oh God, you raise your hand and ball, thank God, Lord, when I get in that, you forget me. So long I wait. 
You can't go there. You have to respect the eye, the nose, and that is where you value people. Oh gosh, you know, you ever get your nail ever split? Your, your little thing, your nail ever split? The, a little split, not for that hard. Just you know, the edge of your nail there have a little small part here. And listen, that body, you know, like if somebody holding you up you're like a gun, you know, it rocking you a little, a little something, something sticking your finger, and it's miserable. But you're not looking for a knife to cut off your finger. You want your finger to be right there. You want this to change. You want this to cure. You want this to be healed. There are too many people underserving. And part of the underserving, undergiving, undersharing, undercaring, they're not, they just barely doing the minimum. They won't volunteer. They won't offer them themselves. You ask them to do something, they will do it, you know. Yeah, they will do it. But the Bible said, God is rewarding you for the extra, what you're not even asked to do. He said, what is your duty is not your reward. You could like your duty. He said, when you go beyond your duty, that is where the blessings are developed. That is the interest. That is where you get the ice cream and the cake. When you go beyond the duty, it might be your duty. And you're not, not if um, I go scratch your back for you to scratch mine. It's not that. When you go beyond all of that, and then you know the blessings is assured. My Lord, can we go a little further here now? So watch. And the last one, so when one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Verse 26, and when one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, ye are body of Christ and members in particular. And that is why it brings it easier now when you see somebody off track and you see somebody out of sync, you could say, but why that behavior? Why that attitude? And you provoke them, okay? Onto love and good works. Yeah, some of them need to be provoked because their behavior is the fallback position of the human element. The fallback position of the flesh. The fallback position of the carnal life. Remember, we were born in sin, shape iniquity, and we're still in this body. So, so in other words, once you break out of the spirit realm, your default position could be back to the flesh, back to carnality, back to natural. But the Bible forces us to adjust our thinking and have the attitude of God towards the, by the word of God. That's why he said, love one another. When Jesus uh, went to do the feet washing, and, G and Peter said, no, don't, don't wash me, don't wash me. Jesus said, you're not part with me. And I like Jesus, and I like how Jesus is taught. He has to be very straightforward. He ain't beating around the bush. Jesus, Peter said, no, no, don't, don't wash, don't. He said, you have no part with me. He said, then, then he, like, he want a bath now. He want, he want full wash. Jesus tell them, I do this, and I'm your Lord and Master. I do this to set an example. Not to show, just to show you, but I want you to do this to one another. I want you to show humility. I want you to show being a servant. I want you to show how you could humble to each other by washing one another's feet. This feet washing have more powerful things to it than it might appear. Now, when you, it's like, oh, the feet is one of the worst parts, you know. That is where they, the kicking out of the dust, the sandals they're wearing or to dust and, and the marketplace and thing, and you go down to wash. You know, that was the lowest job in our feet washing flunky. So Jesus said, all they're going to be flunkies for one another. Wash one another's feet. Treat each other with grace, with humility, because we are all called by God's grace. My Lord, deliver Daniel. Amen. All right. John 13, 34, and 35 is a scripture you remember, uh, are familiar with. Uh, uh, John 13. A new commandment, this is Jesus, is in red. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another. Now, remember I said in the beginning, before I started the scriptures, that it's not something you're born with. Commitment, you're not born with that. Something you learn, something you can acquire, being dedicated, being committed. Um, we, as, as in ministry, uh, we, we have to be a certain way in our hearts in order to get the job done whether we feel sick or we don't feel sick um we strive to get it delivered because we see ourselves as as servants for your sake 
So if I go by my feelings, then a lot of things might not be done or accomplished. But because we feel that this is something that will edify, benefit, strengthen, and help you, your commitment to marriage, your commitment on the job. You know, some people on the job, they, they ratchet. All they want is the pay them. The minimum they could do for that pay, they do it. Nothing extra. They don't stand out. They, they are not highlighted. The boss can pray and say, wow, this was excellent. Mm, that person need a raise a pay. Nothing like that. They are content to be mediocre. They are content to do because they finally bossed this and finally bossed this. And it reminds me of the scripture of the talents and the man gave 150 and 100 and he went away for a five country and he gave one one. Good thing you have these little men to know who to give one. The one with 100 produce 100. The 150 make 50 more. And the one come and say, the hard one, he, he bury it. He's because I know you're a hard man. You know what I mean? I know, I know it's pressure, but I know you're not easy. So I bury it. What you give me, look it back. He said, but you got to put it in the bank. You got some interest in it. Wicked servant. And then Jesus made a powerful statement. That type, the little that they have will be taken from them. So when you see people in certain conditions, and you wonder how they're there, you got to watch that, you know. Because sometimes it's a level of lack of the commitment, lack of ambition, lack of passion, lack of uh, let me say lack of laziness. Sometimes that way it is. Lazy to pray, lazy to fast, lazy to worship, lazy. They really want a priest. So some of these people in love with the priesthood because the priesthood saves them from doing what they're supposed to do. As long as that is my father up there or my bishop or the man of the man of God, man of the hour. And they worship him and they fellowship him like the man of the hour. They're safe. They could do whatever they want to do. They don't want the man there. But that is God's man. God doesn't see it so. Not in this age. Remember the Nicolaitan, they threw out and take the anointing off the people, off the lady, put it on a man, and we fell. The whole thing collapsed. This Christian church that started the Pentecost collapsed because number six got a throne. And when you see man sit down and throne, you know they don't want to leave. Eh? You see them all over the world. They don't want to leave. You know? They want four more years, five more years, ten more years. They want to live there forever. As man without character on thrones. So God put it now that his power would only be released to those people that have, have character. And character, thank you, Jesus, is not a gift. So God, so God can't favor anybody. Hey, come to the back door. All right, come, come quick, come, come quick, come quick. Yeah, you know I like you, I love you. No, 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 it doesn't work. So. Every son that comes to God must be tested, tried. So when you see somebody come true in character, in life, in spirit, in purpose, note this, that they have come true. They have been thoroughly tested and approved. Oh, glory to God. So when God dropped down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm pleased, you know that man went through stuff that bring him to the place where he got God's approval. So ultimately, friends, your commitment on your job, your commitment in your home, your commitment in the church, your commitment to the word, your commitment to God, the word, to prayer, to God's people has nothing to do with anybody else. Let me see it again. Your commitment to God, the word, his people, to prayer, to Christ, has nothing to do with anybody else, not your wife, not your father, not your mother, not your husband. It is your commitment. I remember when I got my certificate to marry Anne Marie, I said, Anne Marie, I marry you because I love you and I accept you as you are. I didn't even know how powerful those words were. Accept it. The commitment, the word spoken. I didn't know her. We didn't spend years courting or anything like that, but just a few months. We got engaged, we got married, same year. But I was saying to her, I love you. I am committed to you. I don't know you, but I accept you as you are. All your faults, weakness, fears, whatever it is, I accept it. I accept responsibility for it. And I could see God having his commitment to his people. That's why you see, if my people, that's called by my name, shall I will heal their land, I will move away the pestilence, I will do this, I will do that. We, we can't get in trouble unless God allows it. Oh, give the Lord some praises because Roman 8 is a guarantee. Roman 8 is like a contract and we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to the only call according to that is, you, you can't break God off of that. 
He purposed to make it work for our good. We can't save ourselves. Rank sinners like us. We can't redeem ourselves. We were in the pit. We was in the mud. Somebody higher than us. Somebody more powerful than us had to pull us out. I know he did. he's encouraging us not just to be out, but to help another brother. Help another sister. Testify to some sinner. Witness to somebody out here. Because somebody written for a word. Written for a word. Oh, my Lord, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so Jesus said a new commandment. I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have loved one for another. First Peter 1 Peter 1.22. I had to kind of run through now so I wouldn't pull back. First Peter 1 Peter 1.22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So now he's not talking about love. He's talking about the quality of love. Love one another fervently. I ain't talking about no, um, no uh, what do you call it? Um, this thing, um, this coffee they call it like you. Um, parliament. No parliament, love it. Hold a parliament. Yeah, I, no, I don't want parliament. I don't want this, this mid thing. No, I'm talking about unfake love. But you genuinely want to demonstrate, you want to support, you want to give, you want to share, you want to help, you want to bless, you want to encourage, you want to inspire. Like the funeral of, of Sister Christine. And it was amazing. And this is the family knew it also. Sister Christine came, gave her heart to the Lord, got baptized, and she graduated from just a believer, normal, coming and whatnot, to somebody that encourages others. In other words, she went past herself. She went past her condition. She went past her diabetes. She went past all her things to encourage others. And what Brahms eternal to her life is living for others. Forgive give the Lord a hand of praise. I love it tonight. This is the word. What, 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 what eternal life is? Living for others. Do you live for others? Have you experienced going beyond your family circle? Or not just your family circle, the present circle that you are in, because you are limited by the circle that you are in. If all you are hearing is from that same circle all along, that's all you're gonna get. That's all you're gonna hear. You're limited by that. But if you prepare to go beyond that and be a son and daughter, disconnected from the affairs of men and affairs of the world and number six and humanistic realm, God could bless you tremendously and take your places. All right, let me see if I can get something. All right, Romans 12, 10 it says here, be, I think I read this before, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. But in the Amplified, it says here, love one another with brotherly affection as members of one family, giving precedence and showing honor to one another. Oh my, you want to honor your brother. You want to honor your sister. Galatians 5, this is what you should find, though. Galatians 5. 13 to 16. Right? This is a this is an important one. Galatians 5. Okay. Galatians 5, 13 to 16. I want you to find this one. For brethren, we want to take it slow. You have been called unto liberty. One. Two. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but to love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 15, if he bite and devour one another, take heed that he be not consumed one of another. This I say then, Walk in the spirit, and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, let's take that in the Amplified. Galatians 5, same, same scripture. Let's read in Amplified. For you, brethren, were indeed called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness. I just love how this is pleased. Because in the regular one, it says, 
you are being called to liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. But the Amplified says, for you brethren are indeed called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness, but through love you should serve one another, verse 14, Amplified. For the whole law concerning human relationships is complied with in the one precept, you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. But if you bite and devour one another in partition strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. But I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. Okay, amen. Second Thessalonians 1. Verse 3 and 4, Second Thessalonians 1, verse 3 and 4. I see Sister Henry right here next to me here, spinning the Bible and getting the scriptures. That is such, such an exciting thing. Hallelujah. Trust that we will find your scriptures. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Second Thessalonians 1, verse 3 and 4 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all towards each other abundant, abundant. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. That is 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 and 4. And this is it in the Amplified. We ought and indeed are obligated as those in debt to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith is growing exceedingly and the love of every one of you each towards the other is increasing and abound. And this is a cause for our mentioning you with pride among the churches of God for your steadfastness, your unflinching endurance and patience and your firm feet in the midst of all the persecution and crushing the stresses and afflictions under which you hold up. My. First John 4, 7, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone that loved it is born of God and knoweth God. And I'm gonna share something with you from the prophet. He's saying we have a sacred trust. You know what a trust is? We have an inheritance. As believing children, it's a sacred trust. And that sacred trust and our sacred heritage is the word of God. So this is the commitment to the word. And here we say now, that's the reason I am so dogmatic, as I would call it, on standing on the word. No matter what anything else say, if it is not with the word, then I don't believe it. See, you want to believe it, all right. But to me, it takes the word. Because heaven will pass away, but my word shall never fail. Therefore, it takes the word. I live by the word, okay? So he said, the deepness of it. It's our privilege. It's a sacred trust that God has put to his church. And God give the word to his church and that sacred heritage is ours. It's a gift from God. Not to compromise on this or cut this out or throw this out, add this in or suit our taste, but to preach the full word, the whole gospel. We are duty bound as Christians to take it and believe it. Now, this sacred trust that God has put to his church, God gave his word to his church and that sacred heritage is ours. It's a gift from God, not to just compromise this or that. He said, now watch, when we know we are bypassing something, that some great heritage that belongs to us, when we bypass it, because our church said they don't believe it for this day, it isn't for our day. If we bypass that, then we spoil our heritage. So don't bother, Branham is separating what the church say from what the word say. If the word say, and the church is saying, forget what the church say. You have to take the word, see? Now you said, God help me. God help you as Christians never to compromise one word of God's word. For this sacred trust was handed to the church. And it's a glorious thing to have this gospel. 
the full gospel to preach it without compromising anyway. Preach it just as it is written. Live it just as it is written. That's a secret trust. And if we ever expect this word to come to pass, if we ever expect God to keep his word, we have got to stay with it just the way God wrote it. And that's the reason if you stay with it the way God wrote it, there will be all kinds of things happening among you. Every word will be fulfilled. A woman is entrusted with certain characters. She must not just be fine. A woman is trusted to that. There's not a creature on earth like a woman. There's no female dog. There's no female of any kind entrusted with the character that a woman has. Is A woman wasn't even the beginning of creation because God knew that she would fall. All other females could not commit adultery. She's the only one that can commit adultery. If she had been made like the original, that would have been discomplimentary to God's great wisdom. She was made a byproduct of a man. And because she was cast over in that side, she has also been given a sacred charge from God for redemption. She has got character. She must not be found. A body is given to her, a sacred trust from God. No female dog, no bird, no other animal, no other creature like that. She is the only one. And the reason it is so sacred, she is to bring forth life into the earth. A body is a bedding ground of life. Therefore, that's the reason she's given that sacred trust. Now we find that her body is the bedding ground, all right? And I'm speaking now, bringing this illustration to show you where the church stands. I'm not speaking of you women, whatever you are, that's between you and God and you men. I'm speaking of the church and Christ. Now, this, she has been given to bring forth life and only God himself can give. A husband might be the germ bearer, but God has to produce the life, that's right. Now, she has a sacred trust of virtue that's been given to her, trusted to her by the Lord. God gave her the virtue just as it was in the Garden of Eden. She can say yes or no. She has a sacred trust of womanhood committed to her that she must not be. The womanhood I'm speaking of here is her conduct, her character around men. Notice that's committed to her sacred virtue, sacred womanhood, sacred motherhood on her husband. Now we find out she has been given this sacred trust that she must not break of womanhood and act her character, raise her children, the honorable husband. And here, what he broke. What a sacred trust. What a responsibility to a woman. You see why she's a type of the church? He says she has a sacred, which has the same responsibility as a woman, has a sacred responsibility of motherhood, to her virtues and to her husband. The church has, here we go, a sacred responsibility to prayer and to word and to the word and to Christ just as the same as a woman has. So Saints Church, you have that responsibility to pray and to the word and to Christ. You have to make that, com uh, that commitment, that commitment. You have to want to improve as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a mother. You have to want to improve as a worker. This, this is, nobody could do it for you. You have to want that. And Brahm talk about, watch, there's shows that has got to come a spirit that, that's on John, he introduced Messiah. Watch, and how will the Messiah, the people that believe in him, know it unless they are constantly in the word to know what he is? Daniel said, the wise shall know, but the foolish, the unwise, they wouldn't know. They shall know their God. But now he shall appear in the last days and to bring the people back to the word so that the bride will know her husband, know her mate, the revealed word. So your husband is not me. Your husband is the revealed word. Oh my, blessed be the name of the Lord. So, Brother Bram, I'm going to try to wrap up here now. Where we at? Time wise, okay. So, Brother Bram talked about offer. Offer. She was a type of a lukewarm church at once started, and she kissed her mother-in-law, returned back, and that's a type of the lukewarm believer who will believe Jesus to be Christ and then turn around and go back to the thing that come out of. My, she returned back to her gods. And many times we return back to gods of our beginning. We got eyes of lust after the wrong thing. We turn back to lusting again. We got idols of drinking, idols of smoking, idols of lying, idols of stealing, idols, and then profess and be baptized. The lukewarm church, the lukewarm believers, each believer represents the church. Every watch, wow. The lukewarm church, here we go. Wow. The lukewarm believer, as each believer represents the church. Every American represents America. Every German represents Germany, and every Christian represents Christ. And here she turned her back, go back to the same thing. And she come out of how that men, even preachers sometimes, will take the way of the Lord 
And when you speak to them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they say nonsense. That's over. Tell them about the name of Jesus Christ and so on like that. All right, let's finish off here. But how I like little Ruth, she had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. You have got to make a decision. You will never walk out these doors this morning without some kind of decision. You'll never leave this room today. Either being a, you either leave this room today a better man or a worse man or woman. To reject it, you'll be worse. It's harder the next time for you to get to it or you'll go out better. It comes to a showdown in her life. It comes to a showdown in everybody's life. And Ruth had to make a decision. So the Bible said that her mother-in-law told her, go back to your gods, like your sister. Did. Go back like the lukewarm. Did. Why don't you go on? The gospel preacher, if you want to go, go on. The real truthful preacher that will put before the class of people, you make your decision. You stand on your feet, lukewarm, wishy-washy, in and out. But a real servant of God will lay it on your lap. Make your decision. Ruth said, I will go where you go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you live, I'll live. Where you die, I'll die. Where you bury, I'll be buried. That is a real decision. And I'm going to close with these scriptures from Christ. Our commitment to him. Matthew 10, 37 to 38. And he that loveth father and mother, this is Jesus speaking, more than me is not worthy of me. No, this is a brass not He's not pastor teaching. He's not prophet or apostle. This is Jesus. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So he is putting on you to follow after. He's putting on us to be committed to him. He's not saying, I follow him after you. You have to follow me to be worthy of me. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Luke 14, 26 and 27. If any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, his own life also, cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciples. Bear his cross and come after. John 12. He that loveth his life, verse 25 and 26, shall lose it. He that hated his life in this world, shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. That where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Just about two more scriptures and we close. What is the last scripture? St. John 66, 63 to 68. Jesus speaking. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit at nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and their life. Jesus in discernment here. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who would betray him. He said, therefore, I said unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you go also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou alone as the words of eternal life. Final scriptures in John 8, 31 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. So Jesus said, if you continue, not start, not stay stagnant, but continue because the word is always unfolding. Remember, the seed you have in your hand, if you plant it in the ground, it starts to grow. When it starts to grow, you don't see a seed, you see a stalk. It grows through processes until they come back to seed again. But God planted a seed in the early church, the Alpha Church. That went through processes. The processes is what we call the church ages. And you and I here tonight, we represent back to seed back to the harvest, back to the rain. Will you be committed tonight? Will you repent of your lack of commitment? Would you repent tonight of your mediocrity? Would you repent tonight of your half-heartedness or just barely being there? Because let's face it, the foolish virgins, they are the people that just get by. They were lazy. 
sanctified. They believe, they follow in Christ in church, but they're not burdened about the extra oil. They were not committed to be stocked up for the journey with this oil, with this word, because this word turned to spirit. Let us bow our heads tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight and um, for this one word, commitment. God, uh, you, you want us to be committed. The first thing I said was, we can't defeat a full-time devil being a part-time Christian. There's some way. And you know, there are people, the testimony, they work more than they deserve, more than they be being paid for. And eventually things turn around that they get paid for more than what they work. It's amazing. And those people who skimp in on the job, they just remain at a certain level. Father, help us, Lord, because your word taught us that they who strive for the mastery will be temperate in all things. And we strive after that prize. You don't run just to run. We want to win. We run after something. Father, tonight, you call us to be committed soldiers, committed people. Lord, when Job had his stripping, he said, the Lord give, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was committed to worship. He was committed to surrender. By the time you finish with Job, he was a better man. God, make us better men tonight. Better women, Lord. Better sons, better daughters. We want to be better. We want to do better. We want to live better. We want to serve better. We want to be genuine, authentic, original. Father, bless. Bless your son and daughters tonight. Bless Brother Isaac in a special way tonight. And he was the one that was packing the burden of his Bible study quite some time now. And we see the fruit of it. We see the interest in it. And I just love it, Father, because what the prophet come to reveal was the scripture itself. It's the word that we have to connect back with. This word. And we have the reveal word that slides straight into the word. Now we thank you for these people here tonight. Anyone sick may heal them. Anyone back sitting may restore them. Anyone need a touch, a revive from you, revive them. God, may they not leave you the same way they came, but may they be blessed. And she has seen my ask it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks again for being here. We love you. And we certainly appreciate. We're looking forward to the next session. And we have uh, tape on for tomorrow night. And I trust it will be a tremendous blessing to you. And we look forward for uh, prayer meeting on Friday twice. God bless you. Have a good night.